sponsored by Brilliant. I'm Rene Ritchie. Hit subscribe right now so you don't miss any of my WWDC 2020 deep dives, like this one, iOS 14 for iPhone. iOS 14 basically runs on every iPhone from the 2015 iPhone 6S to the 2016 original iPhone SE, on up. Also, the current generation iPod Touch 7. So if you're running iOS 13 today, you'll be able to run iOS 14 as soon as it ships. Of course, that doesn't mean every single new feature will be there, but all the basic stuff and security updates at the very least. And as always, developer beta is already out. Public beta comes in the month of July and release is expected around September. Okay, our long international nightmare is over. Kinda, almost. With iOS 14, you can now choose default apps, but only for email and web browsers, because these are the ones that people were apparently asking for the most. And probably only when iOS 14 ships this fall, because developers have to add a flag to their apps to identify them as available for default status. But when all of that goes live, you'll be able to set Gmail and Chrome or Outlook and Edge or whatever you want to handle your email and your web. And that also means Apple's Mail and Safari will have to fight to keep you or win you over, which is better for everyone. Okay, our long international nightmare is over. Wait, I said that already. Well, for real though, no more full screen takeovers. None. Not the phone app, not FaceTime, not voice over IP apps like Skype, not Search, not even Siri. No longer will we lose everything else about our iPhones just because someone wants to talk to us or we wanna type or talk to our phones. Instead, Call apps just get a banner, much like every other app's gotten for years now. Swipe down to answer, swipe up to flick it away. For Siri, instead of the full screen transcript, a glowing Siri ball of power just fires up on top of the dock and then does whatever we tell it to. No transcript, an app just launches, notification just appears. I still love some form of persistent Siri though, like on macOS, where I could tear off answers I need for a while and pin them like widgets until I'm done needing them. Things like recipes. Let me know if I'm alone in thinking that in the comments. And of course, none of this addresses Siri just getting plain old better. So we'll have to wait and see how that works out over the course of the beta. Ripped straight from the iPad circa, I don't know, 2015. Picture in picture is coming to the iPhone. It works pretty much exactly how it's been working on the iPad low these many years. Leave a video app or tap the button and the pip just pops up. Drag it around, pinch to zoom it, hide it off to the side, all that jazz. Now, Apple will just support it. We'll just make it work for all videos using default controls, like in Safari. But apps will have to implement it themselves. And here's where I painfully point out that even five years later, YouTube has chosen not to support it in the YouTube app at all, which is all shades of shameful. So yell at them on Twitter until they get their app act together or just use YouTube in Safari for PIP until they do. Though, it does seem like we're getting 4K YouTube thanks to the AV1 codec, which is supposed to replace the H.265 Apple's been using and the VP9 Google's been using, though it's unclear if that's only on 4K devices like the Apple TV or on all devices through AirPlay. We'll have to wait and see. Also, though unrelated, you can now throw videos up as textures in reality kit scenes, which is just totally crazy cool from an AR point of view. Camera is getting faster, up to 90% on shots, hitting up to four frames per second. Portrait mode is up to 15% faster, shot to shot as well. You can also choose to prioritize speed over processing if that's what you want. Quick take video is now supported on iPhone XR, iPhone XS, and iPhone XS Max, so everyone can get their instant TikTok action on. And all iPhone models now get quick toggles for video resolution and frame rate. Huzzah. Also, Quick take can now be set to volume down so you get back burst mode on volume up. Double huzzah. Night mode on iPhone 11 will help you stay steadier or let you cancel out faster. And you can choose to capture mirrored selfies if the difference between preview and photo has just always thrown you. Also, if you set a custom exposure, that can now persist across multiple shots as well. With the home screen, Apple is going equal parts Maria Kondo and Thomas Frank. See, App Library takes all the junk in your home screen trunks and just throws it into what are essentially smart folders. You get suggested apps, which uses on-device machine learning to guess the apps it thinks you'll use next based on your previous behavior, time of day, location, and other signals just like that. Also, recently downloaded apps and app clips, more on those in a minute, and apps just sorted by category. 
Even there though, on-device machine learning will surface the apps it thinks you'll want to use next, so you can just tap to launch or dive in and spelunk your way through everything. It'll also order the smart folders themselves based on how often you use them. Spatially, the app library lives to the right of the home screens, but because it's so much better than the graveyard of apps most of our home screens have become, you can now hide those extra homers and just keep the app library just a swipe or two away. But what if you don't even need a full app? Well, first, widget all the things. That's what. Apple's taken the rich, information-dense, highly glanceable complications from watchOS and used them to reforge iOS widgets, like from the shards of Narso. You can still get to them on the Today screen if you prefer keeping them always just a swipe away. But there's a new widget gallery as well. From either, pick a widget you want, and you can drag it to right onto the home screen if that's where you want it. Move it around. Place it anywhere. Quasi-related, if you're in the US, you'll also get dark sky-like hyper-local weather in the widget and the app. Apple and developer widgets can be a variety of sizes, including small, medium, and large, and can contain focused information, like details about a single stock, or general information, like an overview of your four favorite stocks. You can stack up to 10 widgets on top of each other to save space, and swipe through them just like drinking from the widget fire hose. There's even a smart stack widget, which, like the Siri watch face, tries to predict the widget you'll most want to check out next, and an actual Siri suggestion widget to serve you up one-tap coffee orders or podcast playback, or whatever it thinks you'll actually want to do next. My biggest question is, will you actually use them? Android stats show only nerds ever change widgets from the default or interact with them much at all. So let me know in the comments, not only if you'll experiment the hell out of them at first, but whether you think you'll keep using them into the future. And most importantly, whether your more mainstream family members will even ever enable them. Second, app clips. Now, Google's had app fragments for a while now, but I've never really seen too many people talking about them, much less raving. So I legit don't know how app clips will be received because Apple often can popularize technology in a way that goes well beyond being all caps first exclamation mark one one. For example, you park your rental car and you find out you need an app to pay the meter. Instead of having to find out what app, search for it, download it, create an account, and jump through a ton of other hoops while you're desperate to just get going, all you have to do is tap an NFC tag, scan a QR code, or hit a link, and just exactly the part of the app that you need appears. Login with Apple just handles who you are, and Apple Pay just takes care of the transaction. Then the app clip just goes away without any access to your personal or private data. Or if you need it again, you can go to the app library and find it, or even install it. Same if you wanna rent a bike or do any number of unexpected things. You know the feature every nerd eye rolls so hard, but every mainstream customer just races to find the perfect eye roll expression for? Memoji. There are over 20 new hair and headwear styles, including man bun, I poo emoji you not. And of course, masks, because literally everyone who actually knows anything, like, you know, medicine and science, says you should be wearing them right now. Also age options, because none of us are getting any younger. There's also a new, more Mac-like emoji picker in general, so you can more easily find just exactly the eye roll expression you're looking for. Right now, I assume. Messages is doing more to help the people who use it the most. You can pin up to nine of your most important conversations, so you don't have to go swiping through to find them, like an animal. The pins are profile pics, so they're easy to identify, sort of like static chat heads, and they sync across all of your devices like your messages do. They'll also animate messages, tapbacks, and typing indicators so you know what's up with any given conversation at a glance. If you're in a group convo, you can type a specific person's name to make sure they see your message, either inline or as a notification, and they all thread up too. Maps now has a collection of environmentally and frankly human-friendly new features, including cycling directions, electronic vehicle routing, and congestion zone routing. Plus, they'll call out speed and traffic cameras for you before the ticket does, I hope. Also, Canada, Ireland, and the UK will be rolling out the new style Apple Maps as well this year. Car keys mean you can now use your iPhone to unlock and start your car, all by just NFC tapping. Well, if your car is a brand new Beamer. But these kinds of features take time because the automotive industry makes Mac Mini updates look positively speedy. Still too soon? 
You can share keys with the people you trust over messages and give them just as much or as little access as you want, including limits on acceleration, top speed, traction, even audio volume, perfect to make every teen in your household hate your breathing guts. There's even a power reserve feature so car keys keep working for up to five hours after your phone runs out of juice, just so you don't get stuck after a long day playing Pokemon Go or, you know, using Facebook or TikTok. Okay, so Apple kind of buried this one here just to make sure you were still paying attention. Go into settings, accessibility, touch, and you can now set it so that double or triple tapping the back of an iPhone 10 or later will do things like launch control center or notification center. No camera there yet though. Alas. If group FaceTime detects sign language, it'll make the person using it more prominent so everyone can more easily see the sign language, which is very nice. There's also voiceover recognition, where machine learning recognizes interface elements on the screen, even if apps or websites haven't done their jobs and labeled them appropriately. It'll also do similar for images, explaining every element in a photo that it can identify, as well as reading out any text it can make out. Just legit awesome. How this all works is super cool, and you can learn all about it with Brilliant's new Neural Networks course. Here's an example. You have to locate your keys, but your room is hella messy. As you look, your wall tiles change colors, revealing how close or far away your last guess was from your keys. Even if you have no clear indication how to structure your guesses, you can still get better round after round, figuring out your strategy based on feedback and finding your keys in surprisingly few guesses. Brilliance, brilliance is teaching you complex concepts just like this, by breaking them up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. You start by having fun with their interactive explorations, but over time, you'll be amazed at what you can learn. Go to brilliant.org slash and sign up for free. And the first 200 of you will also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for your support. Check out the WWDC playlist for more, and see you all next video.